RCOs are the neighborhood organizations that you meet with before you go to the ZBA. Every Philly chopped its neighbors, its neighborhoods up into uh, you know over a hundred of these RCOs. Um, ostensibly, they're filled with everyday, no nice and normal people, but um, together they're a force that can kind of get momentum behind really causing a problem for, for your projects. Uh, in smaller towns, you'll meet with typically the same folks that you'll meet when you actually go in front of their zoning board, uh, but when you go in front of RCOs in Philly, you're usually or pretty much always meeting with people that live around your project. So you'll meet, say, 6 o'clock at, uh, <clears throat> at, at, at like a, the, a basement of a school in Fairmount. You'll present your idea and they'll vote on it. And this is really, off, like I said, going to be the gatekeeper for uh, approval of a lot of projects because variances, like I said, are presumed to be prohibited unless you convince uh, the city otherwise. And the big way to do that is get the RCOs to uh, vote, uh, vote your proposal up. Um, and so um, going in front of them and putting a, a good face is, is a great way to do that. And that's where a lot of my job comes in and a lot of where uh, a version of politicking comes in where you can reach out to people beforehand, see what the community likes, and you know, uh, being eight years into it now, uh, having been in front of pretty much every RCO in the city, I can tell you what we're gonna face and if you're gonna face a bunch of you know, NIMBYs, if you wanna call them that, people that don't want any kind of change at all, or if you're gonna face open-minded people who are interested in bringing interesting development to, to their neighborhood. Um, again, this kind of takes you back to where we were at a minute ago. Every property's got at least two assigned RCOs. One of them's gonna be your, what they call the coordinating RCO, and those are the people that you actually go in front of. Uh, here, we got this list for a property, and this is actually the one that's in the packet. We, we thought it would have been Francisville, but it turned out to be Community Land Trust, uh, and they're, they're both robust RCOs, but one of them essentially takes ownership, and the other ones can show up, and they can bring their people, uh, but only one of them is going to write the letter to, to Frank DiCicco saying whether or not they're going to approve your project. Uh, okay, let's see what else is of note here. Do, 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 do. <clears throat> a good idea, if you have an idea for a project, you can soft present almost every RCO in the city will let you show up to their meeting when you're not on the docket and go in front of people and say, hey guys, if I have this lot and I want to do this with it, what do you think? And you can take the temperature of the room and potentially save yourself $3,000 uh, by not having to hire an attorney and submit your application because you'll get such a strong reaction and the answer is no. And then you might talk to me, you might not like my answer, you might talk to somebody else and realize that your chances are, are very low despite how bad you want it and how bad you, you think that um, the, the property should be zoned the, the way that you want it to. Uh, another big one that RCOs have a lot of control over is properties that are zoned CMX. Uh, CMX 2 and above, you're supposed to have some commercial on the first floor. People don't want that oftentimes. They want to make it a unit on the first floor, a unit on the second floor. The RCO has a lot of control over that because those are uh, <clears throat> sort of hybrid zoning uh, designations. Um, and again, you can look through that packet and ask me any specific questions that you have. I'm just kind of firing tidbits off as, as they come into my brain. Um, so let's assume the RCO liked your idea as, is, as in the letter above and the letter that's in your packet. You went in front of them. They said, we agree. You should be able to have uh, three or four units in, your, in these properties on Frankfurt Avenue. And this is all public stuff, so uh, it's, it's not um, uh, any kind of violation of anything here. But you, you take that to the ZBA. <clears throat> we present, we show any plans that we put together, we show pictures of the property, we take testimony, we show the letter from the RCO, then you get your notice of decision, and then you get your permit approved and you can build. The, the timeline, uh, non-expedited, is about three to four months. If you expedite it and you pay $750 more, I could get it wrapped up for you in, in a month and a half. Uh, so I just my contact info up there. I included in the second packet, basically an entire packet that we submit to the, to the ZBA. Uh, I, I took out pages like, you didn't need the entire deed, even though it's what we would submit. Uh, you didn't need um, <clears throat> all the pictures that we would submit, just to give you an idea of what it looks like, what you're expected to kind of 
uh, bring. Um, and, you know, I, don't know, I just thought that that would be...